Hello everybody, if you are a final year UG, PG or a doctorate student, then one thing is definitely in your head. It's desertation, right? We biotech students are really good at lab or experimental work, but it, when it comes to writing a dissertation, well, it is a big task. Well, fret not, I'm here today to help you out in writing your biotech dissertation. Today we are going to talk about top 10 tips that will help you writing your biotech presentation. And I'm Dr. Vaishali, academic specialist at Biotechnica. Do watch this video till the end because I have a bonus tip as well for you all. Come, let's explore the topic. Now, before we start with the tips, I want you to first understand the fundamental things in a dissertation, right? The, the three S's in a dissertation. The first is the structure. So the stru in structure, what is important is that you divide your dissertation into sections and subsections, and you make sure that they have coherence. Now, what is coherence? Coherence is the flow of your dissertation. So this is very important when we are talking about the structure of your dissertation. The second is the substance. Now, what is substance? The substance is the content that goes into your dissertation about what actually goes into it. And, and it should have the necessary depth and significance in, in the substance, right? So that is also very important. The third thing is the style. That is, how does it appeal to the audience? Now, what is the font that you're using? How the structure looks and the style of the dissertation? The next is the language that you are using. Definitely the, the language has to be clear, concise, and it has to be strictly academic. So all of these comes under style. So the three S in your dissertation is structure, substance, and style. Now let's go to our first trip that is drawing a structure. Now, how is an essay different from a dissertation? Well, it is in its structure, right? In your dissertation, you're going to divide it into sections, subsections, and if necessary, sub-subsections. So this is what differentiates your dissertation from an essay. In essay, it's going to be a long story that you'll write. You may have one or two sections, definitely, but your dissertation is going to be a more structured format with a lot of sections and subsections. Third, once you are ready with your sections, you start filling it up one by one. And it's not necessary to go in that very flow, especially when you're writing. You can write, you can take up the first thing that you're comfortable with and then build on with that. Next is just what we had talked about, that is the coherence. That is how the flow of your dissertation is. So it's very important that Everything that you're writing has to be connected, right? You should not just put a uh, content there just because you want to put it. It has to have connectivity with all the other contents that is there. So the best way, one of the best ways to do it is whenever you're ending a paragraph, make sure that you end it by introducing the next paragraph. So that is how you can draw a flow, a connectivity bet between your content. Next is the sections. Now, there are multiple ways in which you can divide your dissertation into structures. And uh, I'm going, going to talk about one of those ways, especially for, your, for a biotech student. So we're going to see what all sections can be divided, the our dissertation can be divided in. The first is, of course, the table of contents. So like the name suggests, it'll ha it, it's a table that has all the sections listed down along with the page numbers that it will be present in. The next is the acknowledgement. So you will have to thank your uh, university, the management, your peer colleagues, and uh, the supervisor, of course, uh, for giving you the opportunity to carry out the research. So this is what an acknowledgement is. Next, what we're going to talk about is abstract. Now, what is an abstract? So abstract is nothing but kind of a crisp summary of your whole research work. So in this, uh, you'll be writing about the important takeaways that uh, one can take from your research work. So this is for somebody who has not read your dissertation 
and is going to read, but first they'll see your abstract, they'll get an idea, and then they'll start reading your dissertation. It's for them, right? So it, you can think of it something like a trailer, trailer for a movie, right? Just before you start watching a movie, you see the trailer, and then you know what, uh, what you're going to see, you get a flavor of the movie. So that is what your abstract is going to do. Next is the introduction. Well, like the name suggests, you're going to introduce all the technical topics that uh, you're going to talk about and um, all, all the, you know, important methodologies or say the, te the techniques that you're using. So all of these uh, concepts as well. So these are the things that you'd be talking about in introduction. Well, uh, in a few universities, they also um, uh, ask, uh, students to write literature review, especially for PhD is a mandatory to write the review of literature. Now, what is this? So this is not exactly same as introduction, but somewhere close to it. In So introduction is more for a layman to understand, but whereas a literature review is going to be more technical in aspect, you're going to have a lot of more references that you'll be using in it. And all of these references are from technical uh, papers, like research papers, review papers, and books. So that is what a literature review is going to be and that is how it's different from an introduction. The next section that we'll be talking about is the materials and methods. Now here you will be listing down all the protocols that you uh, used in your lab or your wet lab or your dry lab and all the materials that went into uh, for all of these protocols. And yes, you can use references uh, wherever it's needed. The next is the results. Now, after uh, while doing all of these methods, what is the result that you've got? So here you will have all your primary data and your secondary data, all your analysis that you did, your graphs and figures and tables. So all of these uh, goes into the results part. The next is the discussion. So discussion is um, again, um, it's, it's somewhat related to results. So you'll be, it's an extrapolation of results. So what you'll be talking there is how your result is similar or, or is it different from already done work? So you will basically be taking a reference uh, reference work. You will be seeing what their result is and how it is different, how your result is different from theirs or how is it similar to theirs? And what is the value addition that you have done with your results? So this is what you'll basically be doing in a discussion. The next is the conclusion. So conclusion uh, here, Again, as the name suggests, you're going to conclude the whole work that you've done, whole, whole of your dissertation that you've written, and uh, not just your conclusion, the, the major takeaways that are there, as well as what is the futuristic aspect of this particular research. So that is also another area that you have to uh, definitely talk about in your conclusion. The last section is the references. The references uh, that you've used in your whole of your uh, you know, uh, dissertation, you'll have to put it here. This is also called a bibliography in uh, a few dissertations. After sections, we are going to, the third tip that I'm going to talk about is schedule. Now, once you have you know what you're going to put into your dissertation and you've divided into it into the sections. Next, you have to work out a schedule around this. Now, you have to have a deadline for each of your sections because writing a dissertation is a Herculeanus task, right? But if you keep thinking like this, then you will never end up uh, writing a dissertation itself. So it's always better to break it down and have deadlines for all of these sections so that you make sure that you sit and write your dissertation. Second is you dedicate time. So for all those of you who are writing this dissertation as a part-time and you do have other work as well, say lab work or any other things or even coursework or something, then you make sure that you dedicate certain uh, amount of hours for writing a dissertation and you stick to it. Next, you choose the best work hours that uh, fit for you. Like for example, if you're a morning person, then choose the morning hours. If you're an evening person, then choose your evening hours because you need a very focused mind when you're writing your dissertation and that's very important. So yes, this is how you work out a schedule around the dissertation. Next. What are the things that you should keep ready before even you start writing a dissertation, right? 
So the first is all your experimental data, all your graphs and your analysis that you have done around your results. So these are uh, very important to be uh, collected and kept at one place. The second is the result analysis. So again, here as well, what is the analysis that you've got from your primary data? So this analysis also has to be kept in one place so that it's very easy whenever you're writing a dissertation, just pick it up from there and put it. Next, all the protocols that you've used uh, in your uh, research work. And of course, the dissertation format. So many universities have a particular format that they want the students to follow. So if your university also has some format like that, then it's always better to first get that format, have a look at it and keep it, uh, you know, follow that format right from the beginning of your uh, writing because in the end it really gets messed up and all the formatting uh, is difficult to do and it becomes a big headache. So it's always better to have that format in hand right before you start writing your dissertation. Now the next point is about where to start. Now we talked about so many sections, right? Is it necessary to go exactly like what we talked about, like is that the hierarchy in which you have to write? No, definitely not. You can go as per your wish, but there is, uh, it's always advisable to go with all the information that you already have. And it's very easy to put it that way. So first you can always start with materials and methods. Now this is the method that I followed in my PhD dissertation and that's what I'm going to tell here as well. So first you can start with your materials and methods because it is, straight. It is like direct there. There is no change or there's no thinking or anything involved. You have the information, you're just going to put it in your dissertation, right? The second is the results that you got from each of these methods that you used. So yes, the next can be results. The next can be discussion because discussion is nothing but an extrapolation of results. So you can just continue writing your discussion. Next comes the literature review because discussion, uh, as I said, it is more of referencing uh, other works and comparing it to your work, right? So it does involve a lot of referencing and uh, looking at previous work. And yes, that is what even literature review is. So you'll be looking at previous work. So this is where you can draw a connection between these two. And after a discussion, you can always start doing your literature review. After literature review, you can move on to introduction because introduction, like I said, uh, introduction and literature review are uh, almost similar. It's just that this is a more simpler format of a literature review. So after literature review, you can always do your introduction. After introduction, you can go for conclusion. Now, why like this? Because once you're writing a, your introduction, you already are in an eagle's point of view about your research. So it's very easy for you to write the conclusion where you're, when you are in this point, right? So it's better to write conclusion after your introduction. Now, when you start, if at all, you don't want to write it this way, you want to start with the first section, that is the introduction. Now, how is that? Why isn't that the right method? Well, because, see, introduction is going to take time. You're going to read a lot and then you're going to frame sentences and then you should see whether, you know, uh, is it coherent with the way the, the words are going, so all of that. So this is, um, this requires a lot of time. So if you start your dissertation from introduction, right, then, you will take a lot of time and you will you will feel that uh, you've not finished anything so then your confidence goes down right so this that is the only reason why we first go with whatever we have in our hand so once you finish these three right then you have that confidence uh, that you know most of your work is done so with that confidence you your morale is going to still increase and it's very easy for you to finish the rest of the sections so that's the reason we start from what we already have now after conclusion you can go for abstract like what I said, abstract is nothing but the trailer of your research work, right? You don't shoot a tra you don't do a trailer before shooting the movie. So basically you write all your sections and then go for writing your abstract. Now, the next. 
the next step that I'm going to tell you is just start writing. Okay, if you wait for the right moment, if you wait that, you know, till all your experiments are over, till all, you get all the results and everything, and then only I'm going to start, then, you know, it's never going to happen. It's always better to start writing with whatever you have, even if you're doing your experiments and you don't have results in, you know, plays, and, but you have a lot of uh, time out of the lab, then you can always start writing from the introduction. Right? So that is also one way of writing your dissertation. Second is about the language. So your language, like I said, has to be clear, concise, and it has to be strictly academic. So uh, this is one of the major thing that you're, you have to use. You should be very technical when you're writing. And uh, the words that you use has to be concise. It has to not, uh, you should not use words just to increase the number of words or number of pages, right? That has to be kept in mind. Next is defining the technical terms. So whenever you are introducing a technical term into your dissertation, you have to uh, also define what that term is. For example, you're going to talk about osmosis. You said you've done osmosis in this research, then you have to talk what osmosis is. You know, then and there, like when you're introducing, you have to talk about it as well. Next is using references, referencing tools, right? So many people, uh, you know, prefer manual referencing, but I would definitely suggest you to go for referencing tools because it saves a lot of your time. Uh, so you don't have to sit and type all of your references. You just put the paper there and then the reference tool does it for you. It uh, So that is one. And one more is that if at all there is a change in the style of the reference that uh, you had to do, then you don't have to sit and you know, change everything. You just have to change one option in that reference tool and then it'll change the whole bibliography for you. So a few of the reference tools that you can use is Mendeley or EndNote. So these do come handy while writing your dissertation. Second, uh, the ninth tip that we are going to talk about is checking your vocabulary and for plagiarism. So for vocabulary, yes, there are a lot of online tools as well as tools like Grammarly that you can use so that your vocabulary is in place. Next is plagiarism. So many of the universities have licensed uh, plagiarism checks. So you can use uh, any of those tools or if it's not available, you can always go for online plagiarism check. The 10th and the last step that I would be talking about is after you finish your uh, you finish writing your thesis, it's always advisable to ask for somebody to check it. Maybe your friend or your family member, because you've been writing only from your point of view, right? So it's always advisable uh, to ask any of your friends to check your uh, thesis once, to check it out so that, you know, uh, it's, it's always... Uh, good to have somebody to check and tell you if there are any evident mistakes or uh, problems in your thesis and you can correct it then and there before submitting to, to your supervisor. Now, lastly, the bonus tip that I was talking about, well, your first draft is not your final draft, right? So the, the first document that you're writing you're not going to submit that. So you always have uh, time to rewrite it, to revisit it and everything. So it's very important for you to not be perfect, not try to be perfect in the first go itself. Like for example, you're just stuck in one particular paragraph and you want to make it perfect and then only move on to next. No, you don't have to do that. You first finish writing it and then you can revisit it and revise it as many times as you want. So that is how it it works. So your first draft is not going to be your final draft. So don't worry about perfection in the first go itself. Right. We come to the end of uh, this session. I am sure it was super helpful for all those of you who are going to write dissertation. Uh, right. If you have any more doubts regarding how to write a dissertation, do let us know in the comments section. Thank you so much for attending this session. See you all in the next video.